This kind of ties in perfectly because one thing that we see with new teachers, especially new teachers inside our membership, Transform Your First Years, is that they get really overwhelmed because they're trying to do everything and figure everything out on their own because they're too scared to ask a question. Welcome to Rainbow Skies for New Teachers, where we're all about bite-sized tips and simple strategies for bright and busy new teachers. If you're in your first few years of your career and want to make the roller coaster ride of teaching more fun, streamlined and stress-free, you're in the right place. We're Ashley and Alicia, the dynamic duo from Rainbow Sky Creations, and we're excited to be your teacher mentors on the go. There are rainbows ahead, my friend. And together, we're unstoppable. Let's get into today's episode. Here at Rainbow Sky Creations, we acknowledge the Daro people and the Wujak Noongar people, the traditional custodians of the lands on which we record this podcast today, where we live, work and learn. We pay our respects to their past, present and emerging elders of this nation and supports the cultural, spiritual and educational practices of First Nations people. Hello, Alicia. Hi, Ash. I'm excited for a new episode today. Same. And I'm going to start out by testing you a little bit. Do you know what our most popular video on TikTok are. Being that I only recently set up a TikTok account, I'm so showing my age here. <laughs> I'm going to say if it's not to do with hands-on maths, it's got to be the one about what teachers should stop doing. You are correct. Our most popular videos on TikTok recently have been the ones where I've been explaining what teachers need to stop doing, in particular new teachers, things that they can just take off their to-do list because teacher life is so frantically busy. I know I could definitely relate to that when I was a new teacher. A hundred percent. I constantly felt like I got an analogy from a teacher I worked with and she talked about the things that they have to get done is like a big bag of rocks. And what happens is we have these big boulders of rocks in there of like, we've got to do assessment. We've got a student well-being, We've got to teach lessons. And what happens is administration keeps giving us more things to do and adding the rocks and it keeps on piling up and little ones trickle in between the big ones. But what happens is, is nothing is getting taken out. So our load is just getting heavier and heavier. So we want to talk today about what you can stop doing so that load that you're carrying can start to feel a bit lighter. For sure. But before we do that, if you don't follow us on TikTok, go and do it. We are at Rainbow Sky Creator. And we also have one other thing we want you to do. It's a good thing that we want you to do. (laughs) Yeah. You should go and grab our freebie, which is surviving my first years as a teacher, where we give you all our tips and tricks in a neat little package and templates and checklists so that you can get ahead of the game when it comes to starting your first years. Okay. Let's talk about the first thing that teachers need to take off their plate. Now, this is in particular related to new teachers, but if you've been teaching for a while, I'm sure you're going to get some really good nuggets out of this. The first one is something that I fall victim to all the time, and that is stop comparing yourself to other teachers. I feel like I listen to other teachers and I think, oh, they're a really good teacher. Like I might hear Alicia talk about a lesson. I think Alicia's a really good teacher and I'm not doing that. I mustn't be as good as her. And then that way is really heavy. Mm. It's okay if your classroom isn't decked out in a color coordinated theme and you have trays that are mismatched or you don't have the perfect stationery or you haven't taught a particular lesson the same way as somebody else. Sometimes you just need to be true to you. Yes. And comparison is a thief of joy. Oh, absolutely. And I think you got to look at yourself. You're a teacher, but you're also a person and everybody is unique. And whenever you're in the classroom as a teacher, I'm sure you've had that speech with your class about everybody's unique. We're special. We're one of a kind. That's what unique means. We're just one of a kind. None of our fingerprints are the same. And that's what we need to look at when it comes to us as people, us as teachers, that we bring an essence that no one else can bring whether or not you have color-coded decor or not. And I think one of the best things that I ever did for my career and for me as a person, and I was privileged enough to have this opportunity, was to jump on a plane and teach somewhere else because you literally had nothing. You couldn't really bring much with you. So you're rocking up with the bare essentials and you have to pull from that toolkit of you. And that's what new teachers are faced with. You are appearing in this classroom like any teacher jumping off a plane and moved into you know overseas or interstate. You don't really have anything, but you have you and your essence and everything that you've brought 
brought with you since those last, you know, those two decades or more or three that you've been on this planet. So I think sometimes we forget how impactful us as a person is as a teacher. Yeah. And we often have blinders on about the things that we are really good at. And I bet there's teachers out there on your staff that are looking at you and saying, oh, I really wish I could teach art like Ashley, or I really wish that my phonics lessons were as engaging as Alicia's. But we don't ever take that into play. We're always thinking about the other things and we're comparing ourselves to others. So number one thing is stop making comparisons. The lane that you're in is amazing. Stick to it. And then you bring people in, you collaborate, you work together. So it's a good one. Number two, you're making lesson plans, resources, and programs from scratch. Stop doing this. You ain't got time Today. for that. <laughs> there is no time for that. We do not need to keep reinventing the wheel. We need to use what is already available to us. Ask colleagues for their programs. Ask colleagues for lessons, for sheets that they've given out. I think sometimes we feel burdened that we have to do it all on our own, but we absolutely don't. What do they say? as when you become a parent, that it takes a village to raise a child. And we're living in a day and age where the village is not there. And I think sometimes teaching is like that. We get into our classroom and we're like, I've got to do this on my own. But there is a massive village out there wanting to cheer you on and encourage you. And that is by the first load of taking off that need to have amazing, fantastic lessons. I bet if you ask your class at the end of the week, what was your favorite lesson? It was the simplest one that you put in place. And you saw these little light bulb moments taking off and they loved that lesson. So Mm. go out, whether it's making a small investment on a resource you've been looking at and you said, you know what, I know I can use that resource and I can use that resource again and again, make the investment. Or you might look at a colleague and you'd be like, hey, I really love that program that you've put in place. Do you mind sharing that with me? And I bet their answer will be, what will it be, Ash? Of course. Yeah. No problem. Yeah, because it's I've a had two-way teachers, street. For sure. And I've had teachers over the years that have us. we've been in the photocopy room and they teach the year above or the year below and they've said, oh, can I have a copy of that? That would be great for my top students or that would be really great to support Johnny. And of course, teachers want the best for students, no matter whether they're in their class or not. And also you want to help out your colleagues because teaching's a team sport. Mm -hmm. Yep. If you do feel like you have to make it, it doesn't have to have fancy fonts, clip art, keep it simple. It's going to be beneficial for your kids. They can be the ones to make it amazing with their learning and put it on that bit of paper or tablet, whatever you may be using. For sure. Okay, number three, the third thing you need to stop doing starting today is trying to do everything on your own. This kind of ties in perfectly because one thing that we see with new teachers, especially new teachers inside our membership, Transform Your First Years, is that they get really overwhelmed because they're trying to do everything and figure everything out on their own because they're too scared to ask a question or they're just not sure how to get the help that they need. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I think I was that one who would sit in the staff room and be like, I really can't ask that question because everybody's going to know I'm not qualified to be a teacher at this school. (laughs) Hello, imposter syndrome. I know. That was that little narrative, that little person at the back of my head saying that. And it's like, uh, we need to stop the negative self-talk. But what what we always hear our members saying is like, You can come and ask all the silly questions, even though we don't class them as silly questions, and we will happily answer them. We will dissect it. We will delve deeper. We'll ask you specifics so that we can give you the best solution or different perspectives. And that's the beauty that you get when you have more than one mentor is you get different perspectives. And I think Ash and I, we pride ourselves on that, that we are open-minded enough to be like, hey, let's look at it from a different direction. All right, let's try that. For sure. We have monthly Q&As and we've even had times year that we've had repeat questions, but we're happy to answer those repeat questions. And I feel like sometimes at school, when you've been given a mentor or a grade partner, you don't want to have to keep asking the question because you feel like you're a burden, but you're not. And you have to learn. And we all had to start somewhere. That teacher that is your grade partner or your next door neighbor or just another colleague on staff, they were a new teacher once too. And they know how it feels. Mm. And I think there's so many teachers where, especially in the primary school, sector where you've taught 
year three for the last three years. And then it's my admin goes, Hey, you're going to teach year six. And you go, Oh my God, I feel like I'm new at this again. And it's okay to ask. Or we have those teachers who go on maternity leave and they come back one, two, three, five years later and go, I feel a bit rusty on this. I need a bit of support. And it's like, that's okay. Ask for help. Ask those questions. There's no silly questions because the education system likes to keep it spicy by changing things up every year. <laughs> yes. Alicia, what's the biggest jump you've done in grades? Have you ever had a really big jump? No, I haven't. I've actually always been in the middle primary sector. My but biggest I- jump was from year four down to kindergarten. Yeah, I, I probably would have admittedly been having a little cry on my car drive home of like, oh my gosh, I'm excited, but I'm so freaking out about it. What was your thoughts at the time? I was so excited. I remember my principal actually called me my classroom, we'd come back in after lunch and said, Ashley, you're in kindy next year. And I was like thrilled. I could not wait. I was so excited. Anyway, that's the difference between Alicia and I. (laughs) Yeah. I just did year two to like year four. But even that for me was like, I'm going down to like the end of the early years. Oh my gosh. Do I have to hold their hands the whole time through this process of learning? And the answer is no. hands. No. (laughs) All right. Well, that wraps it up for today. Three things we want to encourage you as a new teacher or a more experienced teacher to stop doing. Now, if you haven't grabbed that freebie, go and grab it. And we'd also love it if you could rate, review and follow our podcast because it's only brand new. That would be a huge help because it helps it get out there to other new teachers. This is going to allow us to impact more new teachers and allow them to feel seen and heard. And it's okay to feel what you're feeling. And as well, it gives Ashley and I an excuse to get together and have a chit chat every week. So leave a review. We love ourselves at Chinwag. Absolutely. If you haven't realised by now, we live on opposite sides of Australia. So it's a bit of a rarity for us to get together and have a Chinwag. It sure is. Okay, that is wrapping up for today. There are rainbows ahead, my friend. And together we're unstoppable. 